Okay, so let's talk about rigid transformations. These are the transformations where the object before and after the transformation are congruent. Okay, and examples are reflections, rotation, and translation. Okay, so the big question that we're going to try to answer today is how can I tell which one have been used? Okay, so that's what we're going to be working on here. Trying to figure out, like, how can you tell if you're given two objects, which one has been used? And, and so that's what I want to show you now. This is, sorry, here we go. I'm going to just plot for us here a triangle. Okay, this could be any triangle. And I'm using GeoGebra. And if you guys don't know how to use GeoGebra, you should definitely learn to use it. It's an app on your Chromebook. It's free. You can... Actually, let me do this. Look, you can plot points because on, on your problems, they'll give you coordinates. So they'll go like, you know, triangle DEF where D equals, and you put your coordinates in here, right? You're going to have D equals 3, 5, right? And they'll say like, oh, you know, reflect triangle D, E, F. So I'm going to make each of these triangles or each of these points. Um, let's say I have D, E, and F is, let's say, and, and your problem, it'll give you the coordinates, right? So let's say it says, Oh, let's go with that, okay? Oh, that's not good. Let me change that. Sorry. Let's change that to three. Now let's go with five again. There we go. So here I have a triangle. I'm going to make the triangle. First of all, you can put the coordinates in. Thank you, sir. You put the coordinates in from the points that they give you. Then you can connect the coordinates like this. Okay, once they're connected, you have your triangle. Then you can use, you know, it'll probably say something like um, line. Oh, let me move this thing real quick. I got something in the way here. Here we go. Like, like it, it should be reflected in the line Y equals X. There's the line Y equals X here. So I'm going to use a reflection. I'm going to click on my, oh, I should click on the object, not the side length. So let me try that again. Hit undo. Reflection. I'm going to click on my triangle, and then I'm going to click on the line. And when I get done, you can see that it has created a triangle, okay, and that this triangle has all the same letters, but it has that prime after it, like we talked about before. So instead of D, it becomes D prime, E becomes E prime, and F becomes F prime. So now here is the trick for reflections. I want you to look what happens if I connect the segments. If I connect the segments like this, So if you connect the segments, and then if you find the perpendicular bisector of the segments, what you're going to find is they have the same perpendicular bisector, and the perpendicular bisector is always the same as the original equation, which in this case was y equals x, right? They're writing it as x minus y equals zero, but you know, that's the same thing as saying X equals Y or Y equals X. So, um, and it really doesn't matter how you change the triangle, okay, where you change the points to, 
because that is how the transformation is done. Okay, the transformation is done such that the line of reflection becomes the perpendicular bisector of the points, um, all the corresponding points of the pre-image and the image. Okay, so let's put that down here. Here we go. I put a little note here on a reflection. You can connect the point from pre-image to image and find the perpendicular bisector. That will be um, the line of reflection. Okay, so that's your first big way to do these problems, okay? If you have an object, and it says, how did this object become that object? Start by connecting, you know, connecting them. And then next, find the perpendicular bisectors of the segments that connect it, okay? That line will be the, the line of reflection. Okay, we're going to start over again. I'm going to show you, let me get a whole new one here. New, we're going to discard all that. Now we're going to make another triangle. And this time I'll rotate my triangle. Then I'm going to show you how you can find the point of rotation. So here I'm going to I'm going to make it. I'll just show it to you, right? Our point of rotation P equals let's say one one. Okay, something really cool is going to happen when I rotate. So I rotate this object around this point. Let's say 45 degrees. Now I have this shape okay in fact let me change that instead well that's all right it's just going to work so i have i have if i didn't know where d was if i didn't know what it was rotated around but i have an object and it's like it doesn't look like it's a reflection it looks like it's a rotation so i suspect that it's been rotated well, guess what? This is where perpendicular bisectors are going to come in handy because if we connect the segments like we did before, right? I want you to watch this. When I connect these segments, then what happens is I find the perpendicular bisectors again of the segments and watch what happens. They're all going to meet at the same place. Oops, I got the wrong one. Let me hit undo there. Thinks I was clicking on the side. I want the perpendicular bisector of this side. Arr. Perpendicular bisector of this segment here. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have to zoom in. Sorry. Whoop. And let me get closer here. Okay, let's try that one more time. The perpendicular bisector. Perpendicular bisector of this segment right there. Now notice what, what happened. All those different perpendicular bisectors, but check it out. They all met at the same point. And what is the point where they met at? Well, if we find that, that point of intersection where these three perpendicular bisectors intersected. Well, it's right here at E and E is the same as D. See, D is at one, one and E is at one, one. So what does that mean? So on a rotation, on a rotation, connect the points from the pre-image to the image and find the perpendicular bisectors. They will meet at a single point that will be the center of rotation. Okay. Okay. 
And let me just grab a screenshot over here of this. So I'm going to see if I can do this real quick. Let me get this image here. Okay, let me get this guy out of the way. And let's see if I can do this. Bam. Okay. A little crazy looking, I admit, but this might help you to remember that if you didn't know where, how these two objects were connected, notice I'm connecting B to B, then I'm connecting A to A, then I'm connecting C to C, and then I find the perpendicular bisector of each of these. Now, why does that work? Well, it works because the points on the perpendicular bisector, they're equidistant from the end point. That means this point E is the same distance as B and B prime. It's also the same distance from A and A prime and C and C prime. And the reason that works is because in a rotation, they're always, those points are going to swing around the center and not get any closer. They're going to stay the same distance apart. Okay. Here's some proof of that. Oops. If I were to draw a circle that went through C, you could see that it would also go through C prime. Or if it went through A, it would also go through A prime. If it went through B, it would also go through B prime because it was a rotation. Okay. So that's how you can um, do a check for a rotation, okay? And then last, we're going to do a translation. So if I had an object, again, we'll just make a triangle, boom, boom, boom. And we're going to reflect it. So if you, if you didn't know, so a, reflex, a reflection a translation rather requires a vector and um, you know what actually let me do this move this guy out of the way over here again and then yeah I gotcha I'm not gonna use the pen tool I'm gonna use there we go all right so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a vector in here like this let's say vector J and it'll look like this three and we'll go no let me go eight three so see this vector is going to the right eight and up three so what that means is if i want to translate this triangle to the right eight and up three i can use this vector to do it so here is a translation by vector grab the triangle introduce the vector. Now you'll have a problem and your problem will have a hidden vector, right? So it'll, this vector you won't be able to see. Okay, so it'll be invisible. And it'll say, how did these two triangles come to be? And your job will be to say, well, let me see. I suspect that it's because of a translation. And if you suspect that, then you would just connect one point to the other, and then you should be able to grab that vector and move. Oh boy. <laughs> ah, that's not good, man. Well, you should be able to see that, that it would also, the same vector would connect at B to B prime or, you know, A to A prime or B to B prime. So the same vector should be able to connect them. And I don't know why that happened the way it did, but this vector that I created was 8, 3. If I create another one, let's call it vector W. W equals, and I go 8, 3. Then I can check if that same vector works. Now here we go. Connect 8A A prime and B to B prime. And if so... Then I can define the translation as one that goes to the right eight and up three. And that's how you read these vectors right here. Okay. I'm going to just do a little screen grab. 
And let's do a little writing over here. So on a translation, the translation vector will fit the connection between pre-image and image. Okay, and what it will look like is, thought I had a screenshot, where did it go? Oh, let's try this real quick. Paste, there it is, okay. So, um, oh, I see what I did. I just typed that on the screen. I used a different tool for that. I have to take, get rid of that. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Let me get my eraser out. We're going to erase that. Okay. Here's my vector. When I read a vector, it looks like an ordered pair, like for a point. And the first number on top is the X value. It tells me to go right or left. And the second number on the bottom is the y value tells me to go up or down. So this will be positive 8 over positive 3 means go to the right 8 and then go up 3. Okay. All right. So that is how you're going to do this work. And I'm going to go ahead and stop that recording. And then we can just work on these problems together. Actually, you know what? I'll leave that recording going for a minute. Here we go. What's your name on the top? Okay. So again, the way you're going to figure these out is you're going to look for whether or not you're going to, you're going to look for whether or not it is a reflection, a rotation, or a translation by creating the perpendicular bisectors. Okay. Ooh, that's not wanting to stay up, is it? Try that again. How about there? Not really. Good morning, Mrs. Allen. How are you today? Good. Well, some of us are sleepy. But we're working on getting this, and I'm trying to make this into a recording for everybody so that the next class can watch it. That is not holding. This is a, this is a tough thing, man. Let's see if I can do this. See if that'll help me. All right, guys. From looking at these images, what do you think is creating these transformations? One, two, three, four. Do you see any of them? What do you think? Which one? Which one do you think is a reflection? Two, Two and four. They do look like a reflection, right? Okay, do you remember what we said? If we want to verify that something is a reflection, what do we do? We're going to use a, a vector or are we going to use our perpendicular bisectors? So here's a clue. Okay, watch this. Right? Watch this. A vector is all about locking in a distance, right? So let's look at two. When we when we use a vector, we lock in a distance. I want you to look. 
So I suspect that this point is connected to that point, and I made a vector. That would lock in a distance. Do you think that this distance would be the same as that distance? Do the distances look the same? Do they look equal? Clearly not, right? And I mean, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This point was nudged down by eight. This point is only going down, what, one, two? So if they're not moving in the same distance, the same direction, then it's not a translation, right? Can't be a translation. So we would we could check with a vector whether or not it's that. Otherwise, rule that out. Here we go. So if I made a vector, right, the vector connecting these two points measures eight. The vector connecting these two points measures two. So it is not a translation, okay? So then the, the other way to check is to look for the perpendicular bisector, right? The perpendicular bisector. And so what we do is we, we connect these points with the, with the corresponding or matching point like this, then we find the halfway point. So this was eight, right? So we'd count one, two, three, four. There's the halfway point and here's two. So we count one halfway point. If they have the same perpendicular bisector, then that is our line of reflection, of reflection. So the answer to this is it is a reflection and then what's it reflecting over? What's this right here? The x-axis. Now these these are pretty simple because they they do look pretty obvious, right? This is just flipped like a mirror across here. You said four also, and I think that looks correct too, right? So we'd find our Connect like S and V, connect R and U, find the perpendicular bisector and the perpendicular bisector of QT, and they're all the same thing. So by checking our perpendicular bisector, right, the this we can prove is a reflection over over what? This one over the, the y-axis. Okay. Now this one looks like what? What do you think number one looks like it is? Does it look like a reflection? Come on, wake up, guys. What does number one look like it is? Suspect it's a rotation. To check if it's a rotation, you would do, you would look for your perpendicular bisector again. So that means you connect these points that you suspect, right, are the result of a rotation. Connect them. 
and then you find the perpendicular bisector for each one. And if you've done your work well, they will all meet at the common point, which I suspect is the origin right here. Then you would need to know, okay, how many degrees did it rotate? Once you found your center of rotation, then you would measure the degrees by taking one point, right, and measuring with a protractor to find how many degrees that is. Okay, lastly, this looks like a rotation around the center. So here we go, number three, we suspect this one to be what? 